Hey everybody, Dr. Sean here with another video to help you optimize. This time, this um, particular MRI that I want to share comes from a really brave, uh, courageous, and very intelligent gentleman from India. So I have con uh, clients all over the world that fly in from various different sites, Europe, Asia, uh, even Australia come all the way to get these consultations with me because they want to biologically optimize. They recognize that their body is the most important asset and they'll fly on an airplane across the world. But to try to accommodate more people, um, I, I'm trying to scale and I'm doing a few consultations internationally remotely because uh, I can't expect the entire world to come to me but uh, I can study in the meantime a few individuals. So this, uh, this individual contacted me because he wants to biologically optimize from his country in India. He's very, uh, very motivated, very disciplined, and, and uh, very intelligent. So the interesting thing about him, and I've been waiting, one of the reasons why, I, I, I have to limit how many people, con I can't even open my messages. I've never gotten to the bottom. That's how many people contact me. But... You know, sometimes it's, there's a catchy title, something that gets me. And, and so I was attracted to this particular uh, message. And, and it turns out this person is actually vegan. So I've been looking for a vegan to come forward brave enough to share their MRI scan. So I've been doing this five years. And I've yet to have a single vegan who has answered my call except for uh, VJ. So VJ is the first one to do it. I'm so happy that VJ came forward. And uh, VJ is not only in, you know, got a consultation, he wants to become a client. So he's going to do it remotely and we'll study and see how this goes. And uh, so I'm excited to have him. He's, in fact, he's already uh, integrating with Dr. Sean's client group that we call the Alpha Group. And he's, he's fitting right in. Okay, so he, he doesn't eat the same way that majority of my clients eat um, but he because he's vegan. But he is, he's still a human being who can biologically optimize doing the other 47 strategies that I recommend. So uh, I don't release all of them because I have to have something to try to attract uh, the most motivated people in the world to come see me. If I put it out there, <laughs> maybe they won't come see me. So anyway, uh, those of you that have been following me for a while know my, my basic recommendations that I put out there. Uh, but VJ wanted more. He wanted to be able to optimize. So uh, we arranged for him to get this scan. I worked with him, and uh, he he attained these in Bangalore, India, and this is his scan. So we'll go through that. So right away, these are his kidneys, um, these are his back muscles, and these are his oblique muscles on his side. And some significant things right away to talk about is uh, how much um, visceral fat VJ has. Okay, so. Um, it's likely because we've gone through his diet, he's eating a substantial amount of carbohydrates. So a lot of vegans and vegetarians will do this. A lot of, uh, let's, let's admit to it, a lot of people on keto <laughs> will eat a lot of carbohydrates. They might think they're low carbohydrate, but in the case of VJ, his carbohydrates that I think are problematic for him are coming in the form of fruit and coming in the form of rice and bread. So my recommendations, VJ, was cut those things out right away. They're simple carbohydrates. They jack your, your blood sugars up. And so he's got this baseline scan that now he has this insight that he's got an elevated amount of visceral fat. So he is more uh, fat inside. Fat is white on an MRI scan. On a CT scan, it's dark. And on an MRI scan, your muscles are dark, okay? But look at that white in the middle muscle. So he has deposition of fat within his musculature already. Uh, I've talked about this before. It's called myosteatosis. So myosteatosis, M-Y-O-S-T-E-A-T-O-S-I-S, is associated with increased risk for mortality from cardiovascular disease. For, so the same process that causes the deposition of visceral fat in your abdomen is also... Uh, causing or associated with causing um, this, this deposition of fat within your muscles. So nobody's talking about visceral fat, you know, from the physician standpoint, I see a lot more discussions about on the internet and just Google visceral fat for your own 
If you, you don't think it's important, just Google visceral fat comma danger, visceral fat comma harm, uh, visceral, visceral fat comma bad. Read articles, read studies about visceral fat so you can be educated about it. And myosteatosis or muscle fat. So um, these are important biomarkers. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, Dr. Sean looks at biomarkers. I look at things that other doctors are not trained about. And it's not like there's most of them are really hostile to it. It's just that they operate under the presumption like I did as an MD, that anything is worthwhile is going to be taught to us in medical school. And anything that is not taught to us in medical school is not worthwhile. So they dismiss it. And so if you want to have a little fun, go to your doctor, say, what can you tell me about this really dangerous fat called visceral fat in the abdomen? And you'll see him go or her go, well, uh, because they don't know. They won't even read about it because the presumption is anything important is delivered to us in medical school. So you need to read about it yourself. You can help your doctor understand this and educate him or her about visceral fat. But you should be starting by educating yourself about it first and learning about it. So VJ, let's get back to his scan, elevated amount of visceral fat. Now notice his sub-Q fat. So this is fat on the outside, subcutaneous fat. That's fat, you know, just, you know, well, I'll just pull up my shirt. It's fat, a full, little bit of fat underneath your skin. It's called subcutaneous fat, just underneath the skin. It actually is protected, and I'm going to get it, get into it. It's a good fat, okay? I'll come so far. I'll come out and say it is a beneficial fat, just like brown adipose tissue, okay? We need to start being educated, ask consumers about what is good and what is bad. If you don't learn about this, how are you going to make the best decisions about healthcare for yourself? You're going to have to simply blindly follow that physician. And that physician's training, the system, their, their metrics, everything is guided to improve one thing, the revenue attached to the system and not you. So you're going to learn about which biomarkers are the best to improve you. And it's not cholesterol. Cholesterol improves big pharma improves the doctor who's prescribing the medication for you to take, the statin. And I'm not saying that those doctors prescribe that statin just for the motivation of money, but the whole system, they're all their training is basically points a finger out and say, you're a bad doctor if you're not prescribing, you know, this cholesterol medicine, or if you're not ordering these, you know, blood lipid panels and cholesterol panels. But I'll just go out and say, the system is bad and that's a bad doctor if they're not looking at visceral fat, they're just ignorant. They don't know. So you can't really fault them. They just don't know because 15 years ago, Dr. Sean was still a nice guy. I didn't know, and I wouldn't have done anything about visceral fat. And if you asked me about it, I'd, I'd politely just said, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about that. I'm an ER physician. <laughs> and, and go back to your family practice doctor, but your family practice doctor wouldn't back then. They still don't today. They don't know anything about visceral fat either. All right, so this sub-Q fat is on the outside. Why am I raising this? Because VJ is thin outside. He's got a little layer of subcutaneous fat. He doesn't have rolls of fat. Some people have big, you know, lots of, lots of fat underneath their skin. They can pinch more than an inch, okay? VJ can pinch about an inch. So he's thin outside, but he's fat inside. So we call this TOFI, T-O-F-I. And at the end of this video, so please stay with it, I'm going to have a citation so you can read a nice article from the National Library on uh, TOFI. So you can read a little bit about and why it's particularly bad because it's associated with increased mortality, higher rate of death than people that are overtly more fat on the outside. That's right. So people that are, you know, gross by gross exam, just appearance, they look more fat than somebody who looks thin. And VJ looked pretty thin. I, I haven't seen his photograph because it was an inner, you know, he's international, so I didn't get to, to meet with VJ. But I'm going to guess if you took a picture of VJ and maybe in future videos, VJ will be kind enough to allow me to take some picture of his of his body and share it. He, he was gracious enough because he's dedicated science. He, they gave me permission to show his images, his MRI images. So, um, it's reasonable that maybe I'll be able to get some photographs and show his body, but he would not be somebody that would look really heavy, okay? But he's got this inside. So another term for this besides Tofi is invisible obesity, 
Okay, this is obesity inside you that is invisible and you don't know about it. So it's really important that you do these scans and you can do a DEXA scan to look at visceral fat, but the, the DEXA scan is not gonna image it. You wanna see this, okay? If I, if I quantify this the way a DEXA scan is, VJ or you, when you look at that, just would not have that visual impact, okay? The, the study that matters the most is your study and one that gives you the most information that you can actually see it. Numbers don't motivate people. Uh, you're, you're most motivated by the senses. So when the sense of vision, you can see all that visual fat's far more motivating to you than if I gave you a number, you know, if I just gave VJ that number. So VJ had an eye-opening experience. Um, he said in his messaging to me, he said, and we were talking, he says, you woke me from a slumber, okay? And he says, I'm going to be your most disciplined client. So he's, he's really motivated now. God bless VJ. He really, really, truly um, has become motivated. And I'm excited to work with him to try to get rid, lower that visceral fat, okay? So let's look at another scan on VJ that's helpful to take a look. Wait, wait, let me go, go back to this other one to talk about one other thing. With visceral fat, you low it, visceral fat is associated with sarcopenia, atrophy of the muscles. We see this time and time again. Visceral fat, the longer it's present and the more of it you have, the more influence you have with chronic disease. And so what you see are his muscles are quite thin. They're not large. And his um, um, uh, uh, muscles in his back, his muscles in his six pack, uniformly throughout his body, they're just not going to be as large because that visceral fat through inflammation accelerates sarcopenia. So it really interferes with your body's capacity to put on muscle and recover. And it's probably um, somehow associated, I'm gonna guess, maybe with myostatin, with, which, which uh, is associated with, uh, with muscle loss. It tells you to, to not put on a lot of muscle. So um, I'm gonna be researching that in particular, and Dr. Sean will be back to you. So anyway, he's got something called sarcopenic obesity. So he's got both sarcopenia, small muscles, and this obesity inside that he did not know about until he had this scan. So question for you would be, what would be inside you? What would your, vis your MRI scan show as far as your visceral fat and the levels of muscle? What kind of condition your muscles are in? So here's a little tip. Dr. Sean's going to get into this in the future, okay? So kind of a telltale sign, a bad, a bad tophy, is they're obese in one area oftentimes, okay? One part of their body, their fat does hang out, okay? And where that is are the love handles, okay? These areas back here, there's like, uh, like hand, a big glob of fat that hangs back there, okay? VJ has that, we can see it in his MRI. Now I'm gonna step over here just a little bit. Do you see that red line? So we can actually measure that red line this is a particular type of subcutaneous fat that's in the back in one region in the area of your love handles, okay? And this is called deep subcutaneous fat. I'm going to, it's gonna be a subject of a whole nother video, okay? I'm gonna get into it, you, but you can Google it because Dr. Sean is tracking it. <laughs> now the doctors won't pay attention to visceral fat. They are not tracking deep subcutaneous fat, but it's very, very similar in terms of metabolic activity and it releases inflammatory substances like visceral fat does. And so it becomes, Dr. Sean thinks, a proxy for visceral fat. And we'll get into that. So um, in this case, VJ has a lot of it. And the way you can tell, see that black line that goes around there? I made it purple over here. But that black line that you can see, you know, right down here, if you, hopefully that shows up when it gets published online. Um, that black line is everything from that point on is deep and this space here the blue line that that little um, blue line down down in this particular area here this is superficial subcutaneous fat so this is really good this is really bad cj has more deep subcutaneous fat than the good stuff so this is more harmful and it's associated with visceral fat so we all we always see this connection with deep subcutaneous fat to visceral fat and we see, again, large amount of chronic disease, like I always say with visceral fat based on the quantity 
and length of exposure to visceral fat. So this is why you want to be scanned and scanned regularly so you can track and see where, where you are, what direction you're going. It's not so much where you are today, you know, whether, you know, you're not in the prime state that you want. It's the direction that you're moving, okay, that you're improving, that you're trying to get better and ideally trying to optimize. And if you're somebody who's very motivated and you understand your body's your most important asset and you don't want to have cancer, you've worked hard your life, you do not want to drop dead of a heart attack, you don't want to have a disabling stroke, then come see me. You want to optimize and I will work with you, try to optimize, okay? You can get details about working with me through my website, www.drshawnomera.com, www.drseanomara.com. All right, so here is that citation. So you can take a look, screenshot that, and you can refer to that publication um, that's published in the National Library of Medicine and read it. It will talk to you about TOFI being thin on the outside, fat on the inside, and the associated increased risk of death and mortality from uh, being, unfortunately, like uh, VJ is. And do me a favor, you know, give, if, if you could take a minute, thank VJ, okay? So why this is an extraordinary human being. So he's one, one of, of uh, the first vegan in five years I've been asking for vegans to scan themselves. Nobody scanned themselves. Nobody, even the vegan physicians, I contact them, you know, God bless them. They're motivated, um, you know, but they just, they just don't do it. Maybe they are getting scanned and they don't want to share their results or something or they're surprised. And if they are surprised, that's a good thing. Maybe they'll, they'll start cutting back on their fruit, come back on simple carbohydrates, eating more complex carbohydrates. So if you are um, fundamentally, ethically, morally opposed to eating meat, then you need to at least adjust your diet to eat more complex carbs so you don't have that inflammatory response. You know, I've shared in the past on scans, you know, people that eat, you know, eat clean, have cut out processed foods, how they still reduce that visceral fat. So, you know, health is not a light switch. It's not you got to eat only meat or you got to eat only plants. Or, you know, there, there are in-between places uh, spot. So, you know, people that eat clean and cut out processed foods are way healthier than people that just eating a standard American diet or standard British diet or standard Indian diet. Okay. So get yourself measured, get these metrics and figure that out. Um, this is VJ's uh, screenshot from his, from his, um, his Twitter. So you, you can give him, a, you know, shout out to VJ, uh, follow VJ or thank him, at least give him a little encouragement that, you know, he's willing to do this because I, th I think it will be helpful for the vegan community, the vegetarian community, the pescatarian community, so people can become aware of this valuable biomarker using an MRI to look at visceral fat, get your baseline, and then you can repeat it. So if you're somebody that you're thinking about going vegan, maybe get yourself scanned and watch and see what happens. If you're thinking about going carnivore and just eating meat, get yourself scanned and see what happens. If you think about eating clean, get yourself scan scanned and see what happens. Regardless of whatever way you're going to um, choose to eat, get a baseline of something that's fundamental and that, that has a much better relevance and a higher what's called signal, more, uh, more tr truth associated with the metric. Uh, we look at you know ways of measuring something that we study is through signal versus noise and signals is really um, a function of what really matters when you're looking at something as opposed to noise, which is distraction. So cholesterol, in my opinion, Dr. Sean says, is just a poor marker because it is so high in noise. There's just way too much uh, distraction in that particular metric when you look at total cholesterol and LDL, you know, for it to be uh, something that we should be making such pertinent decisions about our health, whether we're living correctly or not. But visceral fat has, the, in my opinion, the highest amount of signal of anything I've ever found for the purposes of making health decisions, informed decisions about your health. So uh, follow that. And it's also the, the only, the, the single best metric I've found uh, that you eliminate 
has the most benefit on human beings more than anything else. So uh, VJ, he, this is him on Twitter. It's got it's quite a long number. So screen shoot that and uh, and then give give VJ uh, some encouragement, give him some love because he decided to do this, and maybe share uh, with other people this particular video so they can learn about this uh, important strategy. All right. Well, thank you very much for your, as always. If you like this video, give it a like. Share it with other people, I'm trying to get the word out about these important biomarkers and what you got to do to biologically optimize. And if you're somebody in the international community uh, and you're not able to travel to me, like my other clients travel from all the world to me, um, you can reach out to me. And maybe if you're interesting, I will do a consultation with you like I did with uh, VJ. And, uh, and, and just maybe you'll end up being a client for me for, from um, internationally from abroad. I cannot do consultations across state lines in the United States. Just so you know, I am a Minnesota licensed physician. I am not licensed in other states. So I'm just not going to be reading MRIs of you in another state as much as I might like to. I can't. Okay. So I'm a licensed professional. You got to come to me. And also the other thing is I look for motivation. If you're not willing to jump in an airplane and come to me, health is not that important to you. Okay, and it's something that I am looking for motivated people to study. Uh, VJ is uh, motivated. My other approximately 100 clients that are working with me now are extremely motivated, and uh, maybe you are too. So if you're somebody who's really in interested in biologically optimized, uh, consider working with me from my website. And uh, thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you another on another optimized video. Talk to Sean now.